Let's print, scrape, paint, splatter some papers that are going to serve as the background for some paintings we're going to create. Begin with whatever kind of paper you have on hand. Right now, I'm really enjoying using some of these card stocks that I can use as greeting cards later if I feel like it. And then I'm also using some craft store acrylic paint. And I'm choosing a palette of colors that I just really like these colors. And you're just going to begin by painting. Sometimes I like to begin by using a watered down version of the acrylic paint just by adding some water. And then before that paint dries, grab your next sheet of paper and print on top. Don't worry about what it's going to look like. Just Slap that paper on top, give it a little bit of a massage on the back, and then when you get ready to choose your other colors, you might want to consult this little doohickey right here called a color wheel. On a color wheel, colors that sit beside one another are called analogous colors. When you're printing, you might want to, but you don't have to, pick colors that are analogous. I'm choosing yellows, orange yellows, and orange. Those colors sit next to each other on the color wheel, and I choose them because as they are printed together, they still look and blend nicely with one another. But really, that's just a suggestion, something to think about as you're painting and printing while the paint is wet. The great thing about art is there are no rules, and if there are some, they're meant to be broken. So if you want to add colors from other sides of the color wheel, I say go for it. You just might want to wait until the paint underneath has started to dry. That way it doesn't mix with the color that you're adding and causing the colors to become muddy. So go nuts, have fun, and try scraping into the paint as well. Adding different kind of textures by splattering or scraping with the back of your brush is a lot of fun and creates a pretty cool textured effect. If you are going to do splatter painting, a lot of people think putting more paint on the brush helps it splatter more. It's actually not more paint, it's more water. So if you notice that your paint isn't splattering, try adding more water to the paint and then splatter from there. All right, and then move that out of the way and just rinse and repeat. Try using different colors, painting in different techniques. One thing I have found that works best is not overthinking it. Just think of it as throwing paint down, printing it, peeling it up, seeing what you get, scraping, dragging, splattering, and see what you can come up with. The key is though knowing when to stop. Overprinting or painting the papers too much may cause the paper just to start to get a little bit dull. You may lose some of the beautiful patterns and designs that you've printed on it. So instead of continuing to just keep printing on the same papers, grab another sheet and keep going. One idea is going to lead to another. So go with that energy as long as you've got it, as long as the ideas are coming, work quickly and see where the process takes you. Once you've got a ton of different papers that you've printed, then you you can take a break and start to think about what kind of still life setup you want to create. Here's a time lapse of me just using all the colors that are left over in my palette. When you get ready to set up your still life, you might want to think of something that's not only simple to paint, but also pretty familiar. If you've not painted a lot of still lives before and you feel a little bit intimidated about it, then grab something that's just sitting on your desk, something that you look at every day. Finding beauty in the mundane is going to be part of the fun. And then only collect maybe a couple of those items, putting them into a small container like a vase or a cup, and then go from there. All right, let's grab those things and get started on painting a still life. I've gone about starting my still lives in a couple of different ways, but the one way that I really like doing the best and I find loosens me up quite a bit is just using some watered down acrylic paint. Use a color that really stands out or pops on the paper that you've picked. I went with a light blue background and decided to go with this kind of like magenta color. I thought that that would be a really nice color contrast with what I'm painting on. And this is a sketch. A sketch is a very quick drawing to make sure that I do it quickly because I have a tendency to really slow down and pour over a drawing or get kind of nitpicky with it. To prevent me from doing that, notice that I'm holding my paintbrush at the very end so I have less control. If I really bunch up on it, then I'm going to get very tight, my shoulders will get tight, and I want to be kind of loose and enjoy the process. So holding the paintbrush at the very end, using a watered down acrylic, and just lightly sketching in the entire thing really seems to help. Sometimes I've drawn it in with pencil first and then gone back and sketched over it. I've noticed that, again, I'm a little bit tight and I get hung up on little details and also I can't really see the pencil line, so why bother? With this paintbrush method, you'll be able to see your lines clearly. And because the color is, I think, beautiful up against that light blue, it doesn't really bother me that you're going to see some of these extra kind of sketching lines. Once you've got everything sketched in, now it's time to paint. 
let's talk about going about painting whatever it is you're going to be painting. I didn't mix up these colors. Again, these are the same colors I used when painting my background. I just chose pre-mixed acrylic colors of paint that I really liked. So these are colors that I find beautiful. And it just so happens some of them are actually in the still life piece that I'm painting, like the color of that terracotta pot or the red of the scissors. But then I threw that really bright turquoise blue and then the darker blues and kind of a coral into the mix because I just like those colors. So how am I gonna make those colors kind of work? When I'm sketching something in, I am blocking in the colors. So I'm looking for the color of the terracotta pot, the color of the scissors, and just kind of laying down flat planes of color. But when I've gotten all the kind of colors laid in or filled in, think of it like a coloring sheet, then I start to look for the values of different colors, meaning I'm looking for some of the darkest areas in the still life, which for me, from my perspective where I was looking, it was the inside of the little terracotta pot. And then I start to fill in those dark areas. And I'm using the darkest color on my palette. I'm not necessarily trying to color match what I see. So I didn't try to mix up the color inside the cup. If I did do mixing, it was because I was trying to achieve a darker color value. But I'm using those darker values on my palette. And those are colors that aren't mixed. And so they still really pop. And now going for the lighter values, I'm using the lighter values on my paint tray. You'll notice that there's no white on my tray. I've noticed that if I put white on my tray, I will automatically always use that for the lightest color. And then there's nothing beyond that. There's nothing that goes brighter or lighter. So I tend to keep it off my palette until at the very end if I feel like I need to, or I just use the lightest color on my palette as white, which for me is that kind of, um, kind of light gray cream color that you see. So really I'm just looking for values. There's that color I was talking about. I'm looking for light values and using the lightest color on my tray, even though it's not a color match. I'm looking for dark values, looking for the darkest colors on my tray, again, even if it's not a match, and then trying to find anything in between, trying to match similar kind of colors, which is why the scissors are red and the paintbrushes end up being purple. I noticed at certain points I was overworking areas like the lip of that cup or I was getting a little bit frustrated that I couldn't really make it stand out or achieve the colors that I wanted. And that's when you just got to walk away. Acrylic paint needs a little bit of a moment to dry. Once it's dry, then you can go back and paint right over it. That's one of the things I like about it is you can keep layering different colors on top, kind of like I'm doing here. I'm getting rid of some of those sketching lines of mine. If those sketching lines started to bother you or you weren't able to really achieve the values you wanted because they were in the way, you can simply paint over it, but you got to give it just a moment or a couple of moments to dry. I also really like to vary the thicknesses of the paint that I'm using. So sometimes I water it down when I'm sketching, but when I come to filling it in, I really like paintings where you can see the paint on the surface. I like to be able to see the artist's marks on a painting. That's what I like. You might enjoy not seeing that. You might like seeing colors that are a little bit more diluted or faded. Go with where your interests are. But for me, I love to layer those colors one on top of the other. So if you're struggling with an area, let it dry, come back to it, add different colors, paint it something really wild and crazy, like how I'm going to go kind of bananas with the light blue and the orange here in a moment, just to try to like shake it up a little bit. If you start to feel yourself getting a little bit tight, why not grab a really weird random color and just throw it somewhere on your painting and just see what happens? Suddenly it adds a lot more life to it and it also makes it so the painting has more energy and it doesn't feel constrained and tight. So enjoy the process of adding different colors colors that are unusual and just kind of see what happens. Again, you don't like it, you can just paint over it. Now, obviously you can work on your painting for as long as you like. If you want it to be super realistic, you're probably gonna wanna pour some more time into it. But something that you might find a little bit more freeing to help you loosen up. If you're like me and you're a painter who needs to be loosened up a little bit, then set an alarm on your phone. Give yourself like 30 minutes. And if you know you only have 30 minutes, you're going to pick up the pace a little bit. You're not going to get hung up on those small details. If you do want it to be more detailed, then give yourself 30 minutes to just block everything in and then maybe another 30 minutes to slow yourself down a little bit. Me personally, these are just fun little paintings for me, little exercises so that I am getting back into creating and I'm making something 
that I can finish in one sitting. I'm not great about coming back to something. I like instant gratification, especially when it comes to creating. So I've been keeping these paintings very quick and very loose. However, there's been a couple that I've made where I just notice when I even sit down to work, I'm just in a slower kind of paced mood. It just kind of depends on how much energy that you have. That's how much energy ends up going into your painting. So if you're in more of a chill mode and you don't feel like setting the alarm and you feel like just relaxing and capturing every last detail, then go for it. But I've always noticed that when I'm done with one of those very long paintings, I always want to do a really fast one afterward just to kind of like shake things up a bit. So enjoy the process, see where it takes you, use wild and crazy colors because why not? You can always paint over it. And now let's see a time lapse of me zip right through and finish this bad boy. When you're finished with the painting, you're probably going to have a little bit of paint left over on your palette, and that's another opportunity for you to do more painting and printing. Also, if you feel stuck in the painting that you're working on and you just can't stand looking at it anymore, trust me, I've been there, then move it aside, flip it over, don't look at it, come back to it with fresh eyes, and then, like I said, just try printing, do some quick little painting sketches, use the paint that's on your palette. I always try to use up whatever I have left. I hope you guys... Enjoy and have fun.